Yeah, so I'm sitting here at this light, noticing all that space down the middle and wondering why no lane splitting in Texas. So, why no lane splitting in Texas? Well, honestly, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the difference is between Texas and California as it's relating to motorcycling or the regulations. Um, I don't know if they have more stringent controls in place. Um, I don't know what their rules are as far as lane splitting. All I know is that a lot of times when I'm in heavy traffic in the middle of the summer, you know, it'd be a lot safer for me, I feel, to get out of the heat instead of sitting in one place and to get heat exhaustion while I'm on the bike. So that's one of my main reasons for wanting, um, you know, Texas to allow lane splitting. It's, it's just for the convenience and for the biker's sake, you know. It's not hurting anybody for me to go down and, you know, cut in line, you know, so um, I'm going to end up passing them anyway, <laughs> you know, eventually, right, so might as well let me go free, right, so uh, I can understand why a lot of people would vote against it just because they feel like, you know, uh, in this day and age, bikers have a bad name and they're doing stunts and wheelies and they don't want to see them doing stunts and willies down the center lane, you know, and somebody goes open their door, you know, and whammo, you know, there goes the biker, right? Um, so I can understand for those reasons, you know, why people would vote against it. But, again, I, I don't know why, you know, it hasn't happened here yet. I've heard rumors here and there that, oh, it's going to get passed this year, and then two more years will go by and nothing. So, uh yeah, I really don't know why we don't have lane splitting here, why it's not allowed. Uh, if anybody's got any answers for that, uh, feel free to jot those down in the comment section, and we'll see what we can make of it. I'm headed out to PR37 just to clear my head. Got some things on my mind, you know, things I need to take care of, some of my responsibilities. Man, and I'm going to be gone this weekend and next, and I'm not going to be on – the bike, because I'm taking the kids with me uh, off out of town to work, so I won't be able to ride much on the weekends. I'm hoping to catch some time during the week. But I'm um, headed over to PR37. Like I said, I'm going to take a little bit of an alternate route because it's still a little bit of traffic clearing up. Um, it's 619 right now here in San Antonio. Nice and cloudy outside, 82 degrees, a nice warm breeze, but not too warm. It's pretty cooling, actually, for 82 degrees. It's kind of humid out, as you can imagine. It is South Texas. And I'm currently recording on my... GoPro Hero 4 Silver with my Cena Bluetooth audio pack, the GP10 pack. It plugs into the back of the GoPro, so I'm hoping my audio is improved from previous videos when I've tried this setup. Uh, I don't always like the wired setup just because I'm having a wire in the way and having to keep track of the little wire that plugs inside the GoPro. and You know, Bluetooth is just more convenient, but unfortunately, audio suffers. Uh, audio quality suffers, I should say. So it's kind of hit or miss. So we'll see how this video turns out today. And uh, 
go from there. Today I am out on the gold wing, as you can see. Been riding the FJR a lot lately, so I figured it was time to switch it up, take the gold wing out, just sit back and relax and clear my head, man. You know, sometimes life just beats you down, no matter, you know, how, how long you try to stay up against the wall, eventually it's all coming towards you, you know, it's going to catch up to you. So I just feel like I'm, I've been at a little bit of a standstill just in life, man, and just reflecting on things, you know, and getting ready to gear up for the uh, the summer months and, you know, what that entails as far as my business, you know. Demand is going to be kind of hit or miss because of the vacations that people tend to take in the summer. and They have their kids at home with them. There's more expenses there. So people spend less money on training during that, that time of year, unfortunately. So uh, got a lot of things going on. You know, with that, financially doing just fine right now, but I've got some goals that I set a few years ago that, you know, I'm close to reaching now, and uh, it's time to buckle down financially and make sure that we, we hit this goal, you know, that we set. I've also been uh, focused on my health, uh, trying to find a proper diet for healthy fat loss. Uh, it seems like, you know, I tried the vegan thing after doing about, I think I did keto for about nine months, uh, maybe six months, maybe six months, five or six months on keto, and then uh, kind of stopped at the beginning of 2017. And then in August of 2017, I decided to try vegan. And I didn't eat meat from August till about the end of January. And then I got really sick. I got really sick. My blood pressure was sky high. And I didn't know why. The only thing I could think was I was in starvation mode of some sort. I wasn't eating half as many calories as I was supposed to just because I couldn't find foods that I could stomach anymore that I, that I wanted to eat. And I was just so obsessed with, you know, my diet that I was starving myself. And I was still going to the uh, to the gym regularly and uh, hitting it hard with the cardio. And, man, it just uh, it all caught up with me, I think, you know, just the, the stress of trying to find things to eat and all that. So I gave that up. Uh, needless to say, because some of y'all uh, may already know, but uh, gave all that up and went back to just eating a balanced, kind of like a bodybuilder's diet, just tracking my macros, you know, proteins, fats, and uh, carbs, and keeping those balanced for a healthy bodybuilding, you know, muscle building, fat burning diet. And uh, it goes well during the week, and then it goes haywire on the weekends. You know how that is. A cheat meal turns into a cheat day, turns into a cheat weekend. And so I end up killing all of my weight loss progress, not necessarily um, gaining any fat, but just gaining water weight, you know. And, and checking that scale too much kind of throws you off too, you know. You're, you're going to weigh differently depending on how many carbs you eat and, and the water you're drinking and stuff like that. And alcohol and all those types of things so uh you know it's just a delicate balance man and it takes some discipline and it takes some know-how to you know and consistency to track those things that affect your body one way or the other and then you can make adjustments to that and so that's what i'm learning how to do now is you know what i know i'm gonna have a rough weekend at it mentally prepare for that try not to you know, get so obsessed with the scale and how much I'm weighing and just stay focused to get back on my diet and exercise and stick with it as much as possible. So that's what I'm doing now. And, you know, it's working out for me. It's working out for me. So definitely building some lean muscle, and I'm starting to be able to see the muscle more. So I'm obviously burning some fat there too. But I'm just going to take my time. I always say, you know, it took me years to get fat. It 
took me years to get to gain 100 pounds overweight, and it's going to take me years to get down. It's going to take me years to get to undo and unravel all the damage I've done to my body, you know, with poor diet and, and lack of physical activity for so many years. And, and uh, you know, the crazy thing is that I've always uh, kind of been inconsistent with the gym. I would go, but then I would stop going, you know, start and stop, start and stop so many times. And uh, one thing I was consistent with was my cardio. I would always play basketball and, you know, go for walks and even jog every now and then when I could or hit the elliptical machine. I used to always have an elliptical machine in my house. I've always had weights at my house. It was just inconsistency and also poor diet, you know. I, you know, now that I track my macros, I think back at some of those plates that I fixed for myself, and I say, damn, you know, I wonder how many calories I was eating, you know, in that one meal. Or, you know, if you go to McDonald's or any fast food restaurant and just look at their menu, and it tells you how many calories is in just the sandwich, and you're talking minimum 500 calories, which is a normal meal for me now, and you're talking about a max of, I mean, shit. You could go 1,500 calories with a with a sandwich, fries, and a Sprite or whatever drink, you know, soft drink you have, you're going to hit 1,500 calories. And a normal diet is about 2,000 to 2,500 calories. So that goes to tell you how many, how many times you can eat that in a day, you know, and easily go over your calorie intake limits for the day. So what I did is I... Uh, I started to track what's called your total, uh, it's TDEE, I forget the initial stand for, abbreviation is like uh, total daily, uh, can't remember it off the top of my head, it, total daily energy expenditure, there it is, woo, damn, severe brain fart, anyhow, so your total daily energy expenditure is how many calories your body will burn just by going through your day with your normal bodily function. The calories that it burns just, you know, being, just living, just breathing. So if you were to do no physical activity, those would be the calories that you would burn for the day, and that's pretty much set by your body, you know. And so, and it's different. It, it, it varies depending on your age, weight, and height, and those things, and your activity level, whether you're sedentary, moderately active, or very active. It'll, it'll differ. Nobody's, or no, no one's TDEE is the same, okay, or what they call maintenance calories. None of them are the same. So knowing that, you know, you have to calculate it yourself, you know, or someone can put it in the data for you on the website, and you can check it yourself. And um, see what what your daily calorie calorie needs are, and then if you want to lose weight, you just reduce those by like 250 to 500 per day. And if you want to bulk up, like a lean bulk, you just add 200 calories, 250 calories per day of usually protein or uh, you know a little bit of fats. You know, normally protein or carbs uh, because protein and carbs only um, possess four calories per gram, whereas fats contain nine calories per gram. So you can eat, you know, a tablespoon of peanut butter and hit almost hit your 250 calories right there. Just add a tablespoon of peanut butter. I'm going to check my front tire real quick because I hit a pothole, and I'm just checking before I hit the road, man, because I haven't been riding this bike in a while, and the ride feels a little different to me. Everything looks good to go. All right. Safety first, right, man? So I'm out here about to hit 211, take a left on the 16, and I'm going to hit PR 37 from the more technical direction. And I'll end up coming back on this road over here to my left, which is 471 also known as Calabra Road, to the locals. Okay, what's this guy doing? I guess he's going to let me go. Cool. 